résistance à l'existant, Levinas refuses the social food that views society in terms of a totality that is different from the sum of its parts, that's Durkheim, as well as a social food that sees society in terms of imitation, that's Tal. In both cases, although in by different ways, we end up with the idea <coughs> of confusion, either I identify myself with the other by way of a collective representation, or I become one with the other by the renewal of a common deed. <coughs> As well, Levinas refuses the community of the with Mitzayim, which following Heidegger brings communities together around something that is commonly shared, such as the truth. In 1947, Levinas writes, I quote, to the community of companionship, we oppose the community of the me and you, that precedes it. This is not a participation in a third term, that is to say, a communion. The me and you community is a formidable face-to-face -face relationship without intermediary or mediation. Levinas reiterates this position in time and over where he critiques Plateau for assuming an eleatic notion of being that subordinate the multiple to the one. Levinas renews with this position in his critique of Heidegger and thus concludes in a simple Miller yet more profound fashion since he distinguished his position from that of Martin Buber. I quote again, this side by side community, I have tried to oppose the me and you community, not in the sense of Buber, where the social link is reciprocity and where the inescapable the properties of isolated subject are underestimated. In totality and infinity, Levinas' analysis of the face-to-face -face relationship is <coughs> considerably enriched. Against Martin Buber, Iranism, this relation is now though as being a one-way relationship or as being asymmetrical. Levinas insists on the curve of intersubjectivity space, but includes a dimension of elevation. In addition, Levinas distances himself from Hobbes and goes beyond thinkers that identify the social with the reign of violence. To postulate a relationship over than that of violence does not, however, constitute a return <coughs> to the reign of the totality. For Levinas, the face-to-face -face relationship reaffirms itself as the final and irreducible relationship that renders possible the pluralism of society. Against the idea of totality, that is the proper of ontological philosophy, Levinas opposes the idea of a separation that resists synthesis. The self strangely written in the plural form, do not form a totality. And it is in regards to this resistance of the multiple against totalization that appeals the reference to anarchy. Anarchy essential to multiplicity, states Levinas. Anarchy because an ultimate claim where the selves who gain self-understanding with regard to their principle does not exist. Yet this anarchy seems ambiguous and temporary. It only exists for lack of a common principle or archive. In fact, the multiple can resist totalization precisely because of the lack of an archive. Although anarchy is on the one hand a form of resistance, and thus a manifestation of the pluralism of society, it is also, on the other hand, vertigo and shivering. It is not the war of all against all, but the enemy of free wills. 
I quote, we will never know which will, in the realm of free wills, is pulling the strings. We will never know who is playing who. And this anarchy must disappear, not because of the appearance of a more efficient totality, but because of the coming of a principle of anarchy when the face, which is the call ask for justice, it is as if multiple has to take leave and give its place to a pluralism of being that comes to be in the goodness that goes from the self to the other. In this first elaboration, Levinas thought anarchy is seen more as a temporary state whose fate is to abolish itself in the face of a call to justice, then as an intrigue born of the enigma of proximity. Contrary to Rainer Schulman in the anarchy principle, Levinas does not attempt to think or describe an anarchy principle. The use of this paradoxical term permits Rainer Schulman to oppose the classical metaphysical apparatus and Heidegger's food that Schulman sees as an expression of this new principle, or more precisely, as a new way of thinking through this principle. By traditional structure, philosophy, or archaic structure, we mean a structure whose dominant feature is to submit the question of action to an arche in such a way that the theories of action inevitably attempt to answer the question, what should, what should I do? And the answer is always to be found with regards to that period's ultimate knowledge. Metaphysics would then mean the different attempts to determine an archaic but subordinate action. Rainer Schumann gives a new sense to anarchy and at the same time to Heidegger thought. The rule that states that the world becomes intelligible and controllable by the first or by the first foundation versus <coughs> its ascendancy. The derivation between first philosophy and practical philosophy decreases the obligatory reference to anarchy disappears at the same time as the epochal principles that in every historical age organized thoughts and actions fade away. Hence the articulation of a dazzling paradox that is the anarchy principle. The principle at once states and denies itself in other words, the principle is stated only in order to be denied. It is important to understand the 20th century by its critique of metaphysics as the era in which the derivation of praxis from theory ends. Action is anarchy, that is to say without arche, foundation, beginning, or commandment. It is the era of the principle of the non-principle, or of a principle that requires, us, that requires the absence of principle. It is, possible, is it possible to resolve the inherent contradiction of the anarchy principle? Is Levinas' radicality not to turn away from this paradox? And the position and the positing of an insurmountable gap between principle and anarchy. And is it not this contrast that brings Levinas to refuse a purely political conception of anarchy, since anarchy is situated beyond the alternative of order and disorder? In this sense, the notion of anarchy points toward a reality over than the political or anti-political meaning this refusal of a political conception of anarchy is logical since such a conception amounts to imposing a principle to anarchy. In order to avoid the transformation of anarchy into a principle, Levinas separates anarchy from politics, anarchy from all principle, 
an analog key from analog key zone. For the analog keys, according to Levinas, for the analog keys doctrine is nothing else but the affirmation of the principle of reason over that of authority. The anarchy principle is inconceivable for Levinas. To quote again the note free of other wife and being, I quote, anarchy would be self-contradictory to, to set it up as a principle in the sense that anarchists understand it. Anarchy cannot be sovereign like anarchy. Of a note four in the same uh, book, anarchy does not reign. Anarchy is thus separated from the principle and from any attempt to deviate it towards the principle. Anarchy rendered to itself and returning to a certain bareness touches a profound stratum where we can find the complex entanglement of the underneath the source and the beyond the term. Proto-political anarchy opens the way beyond politics and ontology, and here forms the intrigue of anarchy and proximity. Jean-François Lyotard firmly and soberly stated that Levinas' invaluable contribution is the way in which he takes leave of the dominant tradition in Western philosophy. I quote, all thought is not knowledge. That is quite clear. And philosophy is not necessarily, or at least exclusively, the type of discourse that has to do with knowledge. My admiration for Levinas comes from this. Suddenly, Levinas, though, discovers the realm of experience, or of reflection, which is not an object of knowledge. Otherwise, when knowledge is not faith, it is, however, a source of meaning or of the sensible goal of a responsibility to work over. over. Knowledge is thus only one of the possibilities of the human psyche. It cannot exhaust it. Another form of thought is thus conceivable. The thought that is not to construct as a relationship of the thinking to the thought, which the domination of the thought. By foregoing the equivalency between the psyche and the intentional, Levinas <coughs> presents another side of the human psyche, but is far from the mastery of the hegemony of the self of knowledge. Is this not already an entry into anarchy? Levinas states, I quote, the psyche is form of a peculiar defacing, a loosening up or a clamping of identity. The same prevented from co coinciding with itself at odds, torn up from its rest between sleep and insomnia, panting, shivering. This account beyond the fate <clears throat> but it states the importance of possession in the case of a psyche one for the other. The sound is already seed of folly. As the great merit of guiding us toward the right question in terms of a peculiar defacing. Indeed, it is not so much a question of resuming 